Hi, this is the second video about multiple time dimensions. It's probably a good idea to have watched the first one. We'll continue to use the super simple model of the world from that video with only two time dimensions and particles represented as colored balls. Here's a blue particle in a box. Eventually, in future videos, we'll need to switch to a more accurate representation, but for now this suffices to illustrate the principles. According to orthodox physics with a single time dimension, particles whose positions have not been determined are smeared into a cloud. The square of the wave function determines their location. As such, they can overcome barriers through a phenomenon known as quantum tunneling. The grey wall is a barrier that the particle does not have enough energy to overcome. Nevertheless, the positional cloud extends beyond the barrier, meaning that there is a small probability of finding the particle there. Hence the characteristically quirky physics term tunneling, although the barrier is not actually considered broken. With multiple time dimensions, we have our particles in well-defined locations, but their copies in nearby timelines can be in different places, as you see in these full timelines. As long as the observer copies are unaware of a precise location, their mind state is shared across these timelines. We discussed this in the previous video. Today we'll explain how tunneling naturally arises from multiple time dimensions and propose an experiment to test if time is one or multidimensional. Here is a particle traveling slowly towards a barrier and bouncing off. And here is a faster one with enough energy to overcome the barrier. From now on we'll stop using animations because they place us inside the time dimension. Here we show snapshots of events with time running downwards. This allows us to show multiple timelines next to each other. For example here in the timelines further to the right the particles are more energetic with the rightmost one having enough energy to overcome the barrier. For clarity we can draw the path that each particle traces in the different timelines as a dashed line. As we showed in the previous video the observers in these timelines share the same mind state until they check where the particle actually is. Until then they can only make probabilistic predictions and the particle is considered as a probability cloud. Let's see how this would appear in the single time dimensional view of the world where tunneling implies movement of the particle beyond the barrier. Here's the smeared out cloud. If you plot the probability density you get the Gaussian bell curve. The peak in the center indicates the most probable location of the particle, also shown as a dashed circle below. We draw a red line to show the energy required to overcome the barrier. You can see that there is a small probability of the particle tunneling. So you're expecting the particle to be near the center of the peak, but then in a small number of cases you find it teleported beyond the barrier. So now you might wonder how fast it got there, especially when you notice that the speed is independent of the thickness of the barrier. This means that if the barrier is wider, then the probability of tunneling decreases, but when it does occur, the particle shows up as fast as it did with a thinner barrier. Of course, in the multidimensional time view, we're not plagued by such paradoxes. The particles don't do the tunneling, but apparently abrupt changes are due to the observer's minds diverging, just as we showed in the last video with entangled particles. What we do need to explain is how a sideways drift in time causes the bell curve for the particle distribution. Here are the dependencies of microscopic events in two time dimensions. When we rotate that so that time flows downwards, we get a pattern with the charming name Quincux. This looks like a golden box or a pachinko machine where balls stumble down and make a bell curve at the bottom. This is because there are many more paths to the center than to the edges. The number of paths is described by Pascal's triangle, so the numbers approximate a normal distribution bell curve. With three time dimensions we have to employ Pascal's pyramid instead of Pascal's triangle, but two time dimensions are easier to visualize and sufficient to explain the principles. When we say sideways drift, we mean from the perspective of each observer. We remember that there are observers at all the paths down the time dimensions, but for each observer it appears as a statistical effect where they end up. In general, each tends to remain on the same timeline, but a small sideways drift is apparent to each observer when they repeat a certain type of experiment. Any randomness is only a subjective experience of each observer copy. Each observer assigns a probability to each unpredictable outcome, but seen from the outside, there is no randomness and everything possible occurs. Quantum tunneling, as a manifestation of this sideways drift, 
occurs in many different systems, including radioactive decay, which is something we need to discuss in a later video. Another scenario where tunneling occurs is when particles are trapped in a grid. In single-time dimensional physics, there is a small probability of such a particle tunneling to a neighboring grid position. With multiple time dimensions, we have our particles in well-defined locations and no act of physical movement takes place. Instead, there is a sideways drift in time of the mind state of the observers, and sometimes this drift ends up in a timeline where the particle is in a different grid position. Consider a box with a very slow moving particle in it. The white circles at the top are detectors, currently inactivated. We're showing five parallel timelines here, and the particle is in a slightly different position in each. If our observer copies don't know the position of the particle, then their mind state is shared across all five timelines. Now we turn on a grid of low energy locations into which the particle can roll, but it doesn't have the energy to escape from. Here the particle is trapped in one such grid position. The observers are still in sync with each other and share a mind state because the detector is off and the information has not reached them as to the position of the particle. If the observers check where their particle is, then their mind state split. In the left two timelines, the observer sees the particle on the left, while in the right three timelines, the observer finds the particle in the center position. If the observer waits a while and repeats the check, then it is possible that because of the sideways drift, the observer finds himself in a timeline with a different position of the particle. For example, if the observer drifts from timeline 2 to 3, then to the observer it appears as if the particle has moved, tunneled, from one grid position to the neighboring one while well, actually the particle never moved. If the observers continually recheck the position of their particle copy, then they bind themselves to their own timeline, because the repeated measurements make the mind states of the observers diverge, which resets the sideways drift. The particle will appear to remain in the same position. This is observed in experiments and called the quantum Zeno effect. The path of the event tree for the observer is uninterrupted, so sideways drift into another timeline does not violate the path selection principle outlined in the previous video. We'll postpone a more detailed discussion of path selection until we get to the topic of diffraction. Individual particles in the famous double slit experiment still show interference. It is challenging to explain this in the single time dimensional world, but in our multiple time dimensional context, this is no problem. The particles interfere with their copies in neighboring timelines. However, the blue ball model is no longer sufficient and we'll need to cover the wave characteristics of particles first in the next video. But for now, here is an idea for an experiment to verify whether this theory of multiple time dimensions is correct. We start by trapping our particles as before. Now we introduce an intermediate grid position without agitating the trapped particles. This is the tricky part. I don't know if this is possible. In reality, experiments like this are done with individual atoms in an ultra-cold vacuum chamber and trapped in an optical grid with laser cooling. It is possible to increase the density of the grid, but this jumbles up the trapped particles and they settle in new positions. The key here is to fade in the new intermediate grid positions smoothly as not to disturb the previously trapped particles. If we wait a while and recheck the positions of the particle, they will appear to have jumped two grid positions. This is not consistent with the interpretation of particles tunneling in space, and would thus support our hypothesis of multiple time dimensions, and confirm that tunneling is due to the sideways drift in time of the observer's mind state, rather than actual physical movement of the particles. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll talk about the big picture, this project, and what this video series aims to achieve.